Hi and welcome. I've changed the name of the channel to something I think is a bit more appropriate from what I'm actually doing and give me a little bit more freedom to bring some maybe more newer stuff rather than calling it vintage and I see something, I don't know, in the shops, or eBay, wherever, going and I think, oh, I should get that, see what it sounds like and plonk it on the channel and you go, well, Mick, that ain't vintage, you know, it's only five or ten years old. So it's given me more freedom, I think, to change the channel. I, I made a decision uh, thinking about it and uh, I've left it a bit late to be honest with you, but anyway, going forward, this is what I'm going to call myself now. I think sorry about it. And I, oh man, I ain't offending anyone, but I'm just saying. Um, and plus, it gives me the leeway to do some upgrades, some tinkering around, some repairing, and that. And maybe it explains the channel maybe a little bit better uh, to, to what uh, the other title vintage uh, audio did. Okay, um, today I'm going to talk about um, for people, I mean. It's done, you know, it's helped me out here, this little circuit, this little, it's, not, it's not much to it, to be honest with you. Uh, this decrease in my mid-range here, it was a bit too uh, too much mid-range in this speaker, because this isn't the proper speaker, I've replaced this speaker, I'll come to that in a minute. But it also may well help out people with just a two-way speaker, where um, you may just want to tone your, uh, your tweeter down, or you may just, you know, it, not all of them are going to work like this, but you may be able to actually increase the tweeter, uh, just a little bit as well so uh, depending how your uh, wiring of your uh, crossover is so um, yeah it depends how the crossover is wired but we'll, we'll come to that we'll do the mid-range first uh, just a brief thing anyone that ain't watched me uh, talking about blowing these up um, this isn't the original mid-range that, that, that got blown when my granddaughter came around and turned the amplifier number 10 which I didn't realize it was off at the time uh, she went and I turned it on I can't remember if it was a CD or a record I was playing, and all of a sudden, really, really loud. I thought, oh my God, quickly turned it off. And I thought, oh, I ain't blown the speakers or done any damage, especially to the tweeters. That's what normally goes. Turned it on, you know, obviously, first listen to turn it on, first listening, creeping up the volume. Oh, so that's all right, it works. They work, you know, no problem. But you know, a few minutes later, or whatever, you, you realise the uh, mid range had gone. So uh, on both speakers, both mid ranges, could have been worse, could have been the. Uh, the actual bass, you know, getting one exactly the same would have been a lot harder. Tweeters are fairly easy to get hold of uh, for these um, because they pretty much use them on the on the complete range, to be honest with you. Um, but this mid-range, you know, I had a quick look about, but I, I knew it would be a while before I could get one because uh, it would only be in the 90s or um, this kind of speaker for, from them. Uh, so I did have some more short tens, which I, at the time I'd sold to me mate because he liked them. Uh, but I knew that was a four inch driver, so I quickly borrowed one off of him and just double checked and it all fitted in there nice. But well, I didn't, I had to do a little bit of cutting out, but it would fit in there. Um, so I bought myself another pair of Morden Short 10s and just, just took the drivers out just to get these going, really. Not that I didn't like the Morden Short 10s, they're good little speakers, but I wanted a, a bigger speaker uh, to listen to stuff on and uh, test stuff with as well. I already knew what the Morden Short 10s uh, sounded like. I mean, if another pair comes up uh, cheap enough, I'll I'll be tempted to get them again anyway. Um, okay, yeah, and uh, after putting it in there, I thought that sounds, that sounds, you know, that ain't too bad. It sounded a little bit brighter than what it should be, I thought, but I thought I'll come back to that another day, and which I've done now. Um, obviously, I'm trying out these amps and receivers and whatever, and, and I've got to put this speaker on, and I know what's going to happen. It's going to be a bit too much mid rangey so it's kind of like not giving the true picture, so to speak. So I wanted to tone it down to get it as it was. Now, when I first put this in there, my eyes are not great without glasses like you know what I mean uh, and when I'm doing soldering that magnifying glass etc so um, I, I first look when I first put this in I thought it was an 8 ohm speaker but on a closer inspection I realised it was a 6 ohm speaker so I'm um, not quite matched up there so that probably weren't helping at all obviously the actual cone and, and different no, and just the actual ohmage but quite a few other things would, would make the volume loud or lower depending how it's made and whatever material and all stuff like that uh, how much freedom it's got, quite a few different things would, would change the volume. Anyway, um, I thought, well, what I'd do is I'd do a very simple, which is this is quite a simple circuit, this is. Um, there is two cutter ways of doing it. One's called an L-pad, which is uh, a resistor going in series to it and a resistor in parallel with the actual speaker. This is supposed to actually keep it uh, tuned uh, impedance-wise as well. But um, I thought I'd give it the series go first anyway, and if I really had to do the L pad, there's no big shakes, but if I really had to, I would. I wanted to keep it as simple as possible, just to show you what you can do yourself. Like I say, if you've um, had to replace this mid-range, or you've got a, a set of speakers, and you think my old mid-range is a bit on the eye side. I remember, you've probably seen speakers, they may have a switch where you've got uh, 
plus or minus um, 2 dB or a little knob on some of these speakers where you can uh, adjust the mid range and, and, and even you may have a couple of knobs where you can actually uh, adjust the frequency of the uh, tweeter as well. You know, just some frequency changes or some plus or minus 2 dBs, that, that kind of thing. Um, yeah, so I just wanted to tone this down a bit. So um, I thought myself, you know, off hand, I thought, well, I probably I need a 2 ohm resistor, something like that, that would do it. Anyway, I bought myself a pack of 10, and these are not expensive. These are uh, 1 ohm resistors, just 1 ohm, and these are 10 watts. Uh, even though these are 100 watt speakers, the full 100 watts isn't going here. So uh, for what I'm using, I thought, well, 1 ohm, if I'm only going to use 1 ohm, 10 watts would be okay for 1 ohm. Never going to have them full on anyway, but um, even if I did, this uh, 10 watt resistor should suffice. Uh, so yeah, one ohm, uh, I thought, let's, let's give that a go. So what I had to do is take these apart. As you can see, I've got them apart on my bed there at the moment. So I took them apart. Uh, the easiest way is through the base speaker. So uh, I took them apart, and as you can see now, I found the wire. Uh, if we just have a quick look at the actual diagram of this, first of all. Uh, this is the actual diagram of the uh, crossover for the actual speaker. And as you can see, the mid-range is the middle one with the arrow. There it is. Uh, and what I want to do, I want to put a resistor right towards the end, right near the speaker side, on the positive side of the speaker, right towards the end of the positive, and we're going to stick it there where the arrow shows you where the uh, new resistor is going to go. Okay, so yeah, I cut the wires. As you can see, it's the green wire here going up to the positive turn of the speaker. So I'll cut that. Uh, just where these cutters here are actually used. These, these cutters are pretty good. They just cut down to the, uh, to, you know, go through the plastic and down to the bare wire. And um, yeah, they're fairly easy to use and uh, save getting scissors and pliers and all what else. So if you're doing you know, a few bits of wiring work or whatever, and they're not expensive, five or six pound dollars or whatever. Last you a lifetime, seriously, I've had these years. They last you a lifetime. Um, so yeah, so I've got the wire cut. Now what I do is I put two connectors here. Now these connectors are these little connectors here. Uh, they're called like, they're, they're, they're just like, um, terminal so to speak. Now, they, some of them have got two little screws, you have a screw at the top, screw at the bottom, and they're like connecting up like wiring for the house or whatever, or extension leads, all different things they're using for electricians. Uh, all these ones here, and these are, you know, just push down and the uh, old opens up so to speak, so you put your item, your wire or whatever in there, this case resistor, let go, and the spring, look at that, tight as you like, it holds it tight, so uh, it's not gonna fall out. Uh, now I could solder it all, there's no problem in soldering it all, but I wanted to keep this as basic as possible that someone may be on the channel thinking I think, oh I may do that myself, I'll give it a little experiment anyway, not going to cost you a lot to do, don't need no soldering iron, just need a pair of cutters and pull them wires back, cut the resistors or whatever and these clips, that's all you need and if anything went wrong and you didn't like it, it's going to be really simple to put back together, them two wires you cut, just put one back in the top part of this connector and one back in the bottom part of this connector and your speaker is exactly the same as you left it. So, you know, no damage done. You're back to reset, all square, square one, so to speak. So like I said, I could solder it, but I thought I'd keep it as basic as possible. So, um, yeah, so this, the, the resistor here, uh, I started off with one ohm. So I've actually put it in between them two wires. So if you can imagine, this is one wire here, the green wire at the top here, the resistor will be there. It'll go through the resistor, and the other connector to the other end would be the other green wire. So that would be one. Put it all back together, both speakers at the same time. I did, by the way, put it all back together, and then you know, not much of a change there at all, to be honest with you. Uh, so that was no good. So I thought I'd put two of these uh, resistors together in series, and that's what they look like there in that circuit. There, and if I show you here, basically, it's just you know, you, you one resistor there, but it'll continue with one of these other resistors underneath this via another connector, then the, the wire at the bottom going through both resistors. So that's the two I'm back together again. I didn't over tighten these screws, I've just done them tight enough because obviously going into this wood, you want to keep tightening them as hard as you can. You're not going to have many goes at it. So um, yeah, just tight enough. Tried that, uh, still not where I wanted to be. Uh, I've, you know, obviously I've been listening for a while. Uh, then I tried three resistors, so it's one, two, three, then the connection's wire at the top, wire at the bottom. And that was that, that was pretty clear, that, that was you know, okay, but I thought I'll give four a go. So I stuck four in and uh, give a listen to that. And I thought, yeah, this is where I want to be. This, this sounds fine. I haven't gone through all the amplifiers, but I've gone through a few, a couple to be, you know, and uh, played a few record CD. I thought, yeah, yeah, this, you know, th this sounds more like it, like, you know, I mean, this has toned it down, definitely, and uh, more like where I want to be. So um, now I've soldered the uh, connectors together here at, at these ends, but still connect the, connect the, kept the white connectors at either end. Of it but actually the in-between joints I've uh, soldered now you don't have to do that yourself you could actually connect them all up 
just using these again, you know, where they connect, one goes into there, one goes into there, and they follow each other around. You can still use these, but I've actually sold it there, but you, you can still use these. Uh, so then I put it all back together, listen to it, yeah, yes, yeah, okay. So then I thought, well, I'm gonna have to mount it in there, fairly easy to mount, just a bit of glue on the back, push the resistors in place, and that's it, job done, put it all back together. And I've been listening to it for a while now, and it, yeah, it, it, you know, it's not, it's, it's new, and you know, it's a lot better than what it was, let's put it away, it's a lot, lot better than what it was. Near enough, you know what I mean? If I wanted to go down to three, I'm kind of toying in between three and four. And if I wanted to go down to three, all that I do is just move that connector, you know, where, where it's on the last one, just go to the one before and put me a wire in there, and uh, that'd be three hours. But I'm happy, enough, you know, if you wanted to do that, but I'm happy enough with four. I think I can give a more true reflection now, different things sound like when I connect them up to these speakers now than I could with too much uh, mid range coming through. Obviously, you can turn the mid-range on your amplifier up and down, but when you're doing that, you're actually altering, you know, it's not just that mid, you're kind of altering other frequencies as well, you know what I mean? It's got a spread on a few other frequencies as well. It kind of comes out, you know, it pans out. The more, you know, if you can imagine it in an like that, if you're just doing a little, like, change of the uh, tone, it's just going to do a little dip. But when you start, then all of a sudden, it's, it, start, it starts pulling in other frequencies from either side. So, um, yeah, I know you can do that, but I wanted to keep everything as it was and just actually tone this down. Okay, you can do the same with a tweeter. Uh, this tweeter's fine, you know what I mean? I'm, I'm very happy with a tweeter on here. Now, if you had a two-way speaker, so to speak, you could actually tone, you know, on, as long as it's got a circuit similar to what I've got here. Now, if I put this tweeter circuit up, as you can see, the top one's the original, and you'll notice a one ohm five uh, watt resistor there going in before, you know, just coming in from the positive straight away, then going through the capacitor to the speaker. So you've got a one ohm resistor there. Now, what I could do is to increase the volume, increase the power going to that tweeter, I could actually put a wire across that from one side of it, just clip it on with a pair of crocodile clips or, or any, you know, solder a wire on there, whatever way you wanted to do it, uh, short that resistor out, so to speak, and have the wire, and it's, it's going to increase the amount of power against that tweeter and obviously increase the volume, but a, a little bit of a, a, a be wary here, be a little bit wary, especially if you've got an 100 watt amp and you're going to have it really high or something, these 100 watt speakers. You're giving it a little bit more power than it should. I mean, when a manufacturer done this, they put that one watt resistor in there. It's just taking a little bit off. So you, you could theoretically blow the tweet. There is a possibility. So just be a little bit careful if you're increasing the, the amount of power going to your tweet. Just be a bit careful that you could blow it. You know what I mean? You know, within reason, if you've got 100 watt amp, say, off, say a 30 watt amp, and you've got a 50 watt pair of speakers, if you're having it halfway, you should be fine. You will, you will be fine. You know what I mean? You'll be fine halfway. But you start, if you're starting having it on max, then be a bit wary like you with me. Uh, now, if, you, if your tweeter was too bright, if this is a bit too bright, you could decrease it with the bottom uh, video, is leaving that one watt resistor, uh, sorry, one ohm five watt resistor as it is, but doing what I did right at the end of the speaker, just before the, the wire goes to the speaker, find the wires, and uh, just put another one ohm resistor, maybe two, but yeah, probably another one ohm resistor, uh, five watts again, that'd be fine for you, five watts. Uh, just adding that extra resistor at the end would, would decrease the volume going to your tweeter and um, not making it so bright or so loud, shall I say. But still the same frequencies going to it and everything. It's just going to tone it down. So, yeah, so that's it, really. Uh, now I'm more happier with these. Uh, so, uh, job done, so to speak. Anyway, I will come back with some other bits and pieces, some more reviews, some more sound tests, some more tinkering around, some more wires, all bits and pieces, hopefully, maybe some assistance or some help or some uh, interest uh, to bring you like um, a better experience or uh, more enjoyable listening to your uh, be it hold new or whatever i fi Until the next video, I'll say thanks for watching and I'll see you all soon.